Well, one of the problems of receiving 23 centimeter amateur TV is that we often get in-band interference from all sorts of signals. And I've been looking around on the uh, on the net to, to find a, uh, uh, a suitable, easy to build design for, for bandpass filters. And I've come across this one that uses 60 by 40 aluminium rectangular section. And uh, it, uh, it, it makes it really straightforward to build. So in this video I'm going to show you how to construct these. Now there's basically two ways to build bandpass filters. There's the interdigital design which has alternate fingers each side of the of the case and the other is the comb, comb style of filter. Uh, the comb has a number of advantages so that's, that's the design we're going to use here. Now the the tuning fingers are cut from 10 millimeter aluminium rod and then there's three fingers per filter and we tap the ends of each of the rods with a three or a four millimeter thread to mount them into the case. And this is the, this is the, the design here, the basic design. It's, um, depending on the frequency and the bandwidth required, uh, the di the dimensions vary quite a bit but uh, the principle of construction is the same and uh, there's some of the the chart that comes with the with the website it's very um, it's very well put together very easy to follow so the first step in building the filter is to cut the uh, aluminium section to length it's uh, around about 3.5 millimeter thick and there are two two common lengths to use the the 20 megahertz bandwidth filter requires a length of uh, 220 millimeter, and the 8 megahertz one is 250 millimeter. So we'll put that into the vise and cut it off, and then we'll go on to the next step. The first step then is to uh, mark the positions for the three fingers, which uh, uh, is important to get it accurate. The um, the length of the tubing has been cut to 220 mil which is uh, what's called for in the design here and then we come in 60 mil from each end for the first one and then 50 mil space between the second and the third one so I've already I've already sent a punch those holes there so so we'll drill those now all right so I've drilled I've drilled the uh, three 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 millimeter holes through here and previously I tapped I tapped the fingers with three three millimeter metric thread and now we attach it in the inside there. Now it's rather tricky getting to the center one and I found one of these tools. This is uh, quite useful. You could probably come up with other ways of doing it but it's got a bit of fluff on it. Put it in like that and then to, to attach the center one, like so. Because we'll have to take it apart a few times before we finish, but so otherwise it makes it a bit tricky to get to it. And of course, being this is a fairly tight grabber, this one, it'll hold it, hold it while we tighten it up. Take the tool off. Now we can see we've got that one in there. Okay, now the tuning, the tuning screws. They the design calls for three mil, but I I prefer to use four mil, uh, more secure in the hole. So I'm going to mark off along here the position for the four mil tuning screws, drill and tap tap the threads as per the the design there. So we'll start doing that and then the last thing I'm going to do is the positioning of the uh, SMA connectors for the, for the driven and the driven rod and the pickup rod, the end. Well I've marked out the positions for the SMA connector and the three tuning screws and the SMA connector on this end and I've center punched them. So We'll now we'll drill we'll drill them all uh, and tap the three center tuning screws which are opposite the ends of the 
of the rods inside, the 10mm rods. Now just a couple of things, um, it's important to clean off the swarf on the inside of the tube here so that the, the fingers sit flat and also the, um, the SMA connector, I've drilled a 4mm hole here because this type of connector that they call for in the design has an insulator and that'll be a snug fit into the hole and then I'll be able to accurately mark and drill the position for the mounting screws and I've drilled a 3mm hole for the tuning screws and I'll tap the thread out to, to 4mm with a locking nut. Well I've cut the the three the four millimeter thread for the tuning screws here and this is fairly thin aluminium so I only drilled a three mil hole and uh, they're quite quite tight um, so the next step is to is to drill the mounting screws for the um, SMA SMA connectors here so they're 2.5 millimeter hole I highly recommend buying a set of metric uh, drill bits very very useful for uh, working on anything that comes out of China all right well there we are I've, um, I've fitted some brass tubing to the end of the SMA sockets uh, 35 millimeter long I said the incorrect size before uh, the design calls for copper but I'm sure brass uh, would work just as well and I have used um, copper wire too just beside the pin so the slide offset doesn't seem to make any difference so now the next step is to mount the uh, the fingers inside inside the uh, the uh, aluminium section and uh, then we'll mount the uh, SMA sockets so I'm screwing in the last of the uh, fingers and I'm using this tool here to hold it in place uh, don't really need to on the outside one but you certainly need it on the center one so we'll tighten it, tighten it up. Right. And, and there's the three three figures in there. So now we mount the uh, SMA sockets. And then after that the tuning bolts on the other side. Okay, so I've installed all the components. Uh, I haven't put all the screws into the SMA socket because I may have to remove the fingers to adjust their length down. The tuning screws are in and what they do, they lower the resonant frequency by up to 5%. So the, the fingers are cut to be slightly uh, high in frequency then tuned to resonance with the screws. Uh, so what we'll do now, we'll uh, go and connect it up to the spectrum analyzer and see how it looks. I thought I'd show you the effect of the tuning screws on the waveform shape. And we'll start with the uh, input screw. So as I turn that, as turning it outwards, turning it inwards, not as great a change as the others. And by the way, you can you can connect the filter either way, but uh, the tuning will reverse, of course. Now we'll go to the, the center screw. See quite a dramatic change there. That's screwing it in, lowering the frequency, screwing it out, raising the the frequency and altering the shape. And then the output screw, not as much. The center screw has the most effect. Well, this one, this is tuning it in, this is the output screw, tuning it in. And then tuning it out. So there's the final setting. Uh, we're on 1285 megs and 50 meg band spread. And you can see it's, uh, it's good to about, uh, starts to drop off about 12 1292, about 1292 to not 1293, and the other other side around about uh, 12 uh, 1280, 12, uh, 1279. So to finish off the um, 1285 filter video, 
uh, I thought I'd check the SWR with this uh, Enritsu Sight Master meter and it's showing there that at uh, 1285 megs it's 1.36 to 1 which is uh, I think quite a acceptable so not only is it a good bandpass filter it has a, a good match 